Thank you, Sashin, Lord Mayor, Honourable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege and an honour to be here today as our ICS President. Sashin, you have painted us this morning a brief but vivid picture of modern India and the enormous economic and social forces facing and forming this complex nation. Those forces demand a high ambition from policymakers and all of us. This ambition and the commitment to it are beyond question. This ambition and the commitment to it are creating an unprecedented demand for professionals and professional standards. Unprecedented, but not entirely unique, for what is happening in India has parallels elsewhere. I'm fortunate to have visited India and Delhi in particular twice just in this last year, and on both occasions I have been struck by India's thirst for professional standards and best practice, which mirrors what RICS sees globally. It may surprise some of you that RICS has a global perspective, because RICS was established 144 years ago by a small group of railway land surveyors in a meeting in London, just 36 people. Over the years we grew, but for the large part of our history we were essentially a British institution. To the extent that we then had a global perspective, it was then through a British lens. But that was the past. Today, our ICS is unquestionably international. Our headquarters may still be in London, but we now have offices in 27 world cities. These are not overseas outposts. Rather, they are a network of offices that collectively constitute a global body. Each office represents our members' home in their local and regional markets. And in all, we have members in 140 countries. Around half of all new members today come from countries other than the UK. And by 2020, that's only seven years, they will form the majority of our membership. Our ICS is also becoming increasingly diverse, more able to understand the different markets and to respond to their needs, better placed to identify and develop best practice, increasing the opportunities for professionals in land, property and construction, and for them to operate in the global markets of today. Diversity is our strength, but so too is clarity and continuity of purpose. Our charter dates back to 1881 that enshrines our duty, our professional duty, to act in the public interest in setting and enforcing professional and ethical standards in land, property and construction. This sense of duty which our charter instills in our ICS members is as real today as it was all those years ago. It is the very essence of our existence. It goes to the heart of what it means to be a professional. And that is why the RICS qualification is so highly regarded throughout the world. Notwithstanding this lasting imperative, the profession looks very different today to the one that our founding members envisaged, or indeed, to the profession that I joined more than 40 years ago. Today, our ICS represents one of the most diverse, exciting and dynamic professions in the world, buoyed by technological advances and globalization. There are 17 different professional groups, each offering their expertise across international markets, often for global organizations with global client bases, and it is the drawing together of those 17 specialisms into one profession which makes our ICS unique in the world today. Some members are involved in the valuation, management, investment and sale of land and real estate, an asset class said by the World Bank to represent 70% of global wealth. Others are responsible for costing and building infrastructure that stimulates whole economies and sustains and connects rapidly urbanizing and growing populations in our major cities. Indeed, our profession touches people's everyday lives as no others. The space that we work in, the space that we live in, and the space that we shop in. The infrastructure that underpins them, 
the legal and financial aspects governing and enabling the use and ownership of that land. What other profession is so inextricably linked to all aspects of society and the economy? I am proud to be a part of that, a pride shared by 185,000 RICS members and trainees worldwide. The changes that we see around us in land use and in property are happening faster than ever, especially in India, China and South America. So it is natural that new RICS members come from these countries. There are over 30,000 people on RICS accredited courses outside the UK. And as the geographic landscape has changed, so has RICS. We are also adapting our business culture and our practices. Today, our members provide expert and professional advice on matters as wide-ranging as sustainable urban development, affordable housing, capital markets, urban and rural infrastructure, cost efficiency, project management, and business valuation. With such rapid change, it is essential that our members commit to lifelong learning and continuing professional development, something on which RICS places great emphasis. That is why we put huge effort into harnessing the expertise of leading practitioners around the world to develop market-leading, relevant guidance and training courses. In recent years, RICS has been on a mission to communicate the importance of standards and ethics in our profession at a time when in so many parts of the world, public confidence is at such a low ebb. The message back to us has been loud and clear. This global profession needs globally recognised standards and globally recognised qualifications, which provide reassurance to developers, to investors, to lenders, and perhaps most of all, to consumers. Standards which allow for certainty, transparency, and the most efficient use of scarce resources. Standards which enable meaningful comparisons, leading to well-informed decisions. RICS is the leading proponent of global standards in land, property and construction, but we do not claim to own these standards. We have no monopoly on wisdom. Instead, we work with others to develop standards so that we can be sure that we have the best use of the available expertise and that the standards we develop with others have genuine support. So the standards the profession needs are not exclusively ours, but RICS is uniquely placed to train and equip the global cohort of professionals charged with implementing them. We do this through gold standard training, backed up with technical tools, guidance, regulation, local market insights, and opinion leading research. Before I end, I would like to highlight a key piece of RICS research which we are publishing today, the RICS white paper on smart cities. As we have heard, the rate of human migration into urban environments has reached unprecedented levels. In response, new and exciting cities are, urbanly, are urgently developing smart city planning. They are implementing projects and programs to provide their inhabitants with a safe, healthy and sustainable environment. Placemaking. Smart cities set out the challenges facing our world cities. It identifies some solutions and describes realistic next steps for our cities to become sustainable smart cities. This white paper is one piece of the jigsaw that RICS Vision for Cities Global Policy and Research Program. If you want to examine key thinking behind the delivery of sustainable, sustainable cities of 2030 and beyond, I commend the paper to you. Lord Mayor. Honourable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, a vision for smart cities in 2030 can only become a reality if we redouble our, effort, our efforts. We can and we must. RICS stands ready for the challenge. I hope that we can count on your support and your friendship. I hope that together we can form the partnerships to develop standards. I hope that together we can train and equip the professionals in land, property and construction, whose work lies at the heart of human activity. Thank you.